Everything carries energy, whether it's the people that you're around, whether it's objects that are even laying around your house that you're around every single day, or even specific locations you go, all carry with it a specific energy that may have an influence over you until you become aware of what that subconscious energy is. Now what happens is when you become aware of what associations you have with the things that are laying around you, the people around you, or the locations that you go consistently, you're able to then have a different influence over your life and you stop getting pulled into the past. Think of the music you listened to back in high school. What if when you listen to that music, you find yourself having similar thoughts, similar emotions, even similar associations to different times of your past of even the things that you worried about then? What if you wore a sweater from high school and then you started to feel and you started to remember different things and different energies that you dealt with back then, you are now dealing with now. These are all interesting things to look at with this esoteric side of reality. And when you begin to take your power back and become aware of what those associations are, you can take your power back in a very powerful way. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to become aware of what connection you may have, what we call energy strands to these things in your life, whether it is the people in your life, the things that are laying around in your life or the locations. And I'm going to show you how you can take your power back, understand how it affects you and how you can actually direct it in the energy that you want so that you set yourself up for more success in general. One of the fascinating things about energy strands or the connection that we have to objects that most people don't understand is that objects carry a specific energy that when we are around or when we are perceiving of it affects us in such a way that it can either give us power or give us the ability to create what we want or it can actually block us or create negative synchronicities for what we want. Now, I believe that this has to do with understanding our connection to different associations to objects. Now, for example, uh, you can even take this a step further with music, for example. So one thing I remember is that back in 2012, I went through my spiritual awakening. And what happened is I was listening to a certain musical group called Enigma, spiritual music. My mom used to listen to it when I was a kid. However, during my awakening, I would listen to that song and to those, uh, the music. And what would happen is it was a very expansive feeling. Now, what happened is even years later, like today, I listen to the music often because it puts me into a very expansive state. It reminds me of the awe of going through a spiritual awakening and the expansion, the new insights, the connection that I felt to my own spirit, to meditation, and to some of the practices that I was embodying. Now, in the same way, there is certain music like that of, uh, for example, when I was going through a harder time back in the day, I was listening to Kid Cudi. It's an album uh, called Man on the Moon. And anytime I would listen to this album, it was a certain period of my life where I was feeling blocked, I was feeling stuck. And in a way, what I believe is happening is there's some form of energy strand or energy connection when I listen to this music that takes me back energetically to remembering similar thoughts, similar emotions, and similar patterns and habits that I had back then. And it has an effect of almost weighing me down. It's almost like there is also people that will reach out to me that was around during that time when I was listening to that album. It's like the association of just listening to it help makes me remember them. And also there's an, an attraction or a connection to where then I'm more likely to have them reach out to me out of nowhere or have some type of synchronicity where I run into people from that time. So this is a very interesting perspective that I've been contemplating lately because I've been able to then see, well, how can I hack my reality by perceiving of times I felt this expansive energy from different music and different things in my life, how can I create an energy strand to my ideal reality of what I actually want to experience? Now, in the same thread, I believe that different objects even carry with it a certain energy. Now, an example of this could be, actually, I was talking to my sister recently. My sister had an experience where she was on a boat 
with her boyfriend and something happened where a rock or something hit her hand and almost like severed one of her fingers off. She had to go to the hospital. It like broke her finger. It was a pretty traumatic experience. And what she realized is that then months later, she got into another injury and instead of with her finger, it was with some, it was another part of her body. It was, um, I think her foot, her foot or her, her toe or something like that. But what ended up happening is she told me on the phone just like a couple days ago that she recognized that she was wearing the same pair of underwear. She has, she said she has, it's not like she just has like five pairs of underwear. She was wearing the same pair of underwear during both those traumatic experiences because I was talking, she saw in my Instagram content, talking about this idea that objects carry certain energy. And also I was talking about how when I moved from Austin to Los Angeles, I got rid of a whole bunch of stuff in storage. And that provoked this conversation of talking about how objects carry energy. So in an interesting way, when my sister told me that, I found it very interesting because it was also something that reminded me of a positive side of this coin where I remembered a story from Manny Pacquiao, who is a famous boxer. And what would happen is he would be fighting and he would always stay, I believe, in the Mandalay Bay in a very specific room. And it was a specific room where when he stayed in, he had this association with winning. Every time he stayed in this room, he had this superstitious belief that he would then win his boxing match. And that tended out to be the case. Well, one of the few times he lost, they actually booked out that room and he had to stay in a different room. I don't remember if it was a different hotel, but it was definitely a different room. And he ended up losing that match. He ended up losing that boxing match. Now he, I don't remember if he was blaming it on that, but it was something he definitely was aware of because I heard him talk about it. And what I thought was interesting about that is maybe that room he was in, there was a certain association to the energy of that room, the association of that room that he had to winning, that he had to a specific outcome. And when they switched the room, what could have happened is he started to, maybe he, he also gave it a negative meaning. Maybe he was like, I switched the room. Maybe I'm not going to win. Maybe he started to doubt himself or Maybe it was just that he didn't have that positive association that was helping him from being in that specific room he was staying in. And therefore he wasn't picking up on the benefit of this energy strand, this energy cord of connection to a reality that he actually wanted. So in a way it could be just the belief or the association in our mind that's connecting us to different parts of our past or connecting us to different times in our life where maybe we won or maybe we lost or whatever it is. But this is why it could be a very powerful thing to also let go of associations that no longer serve you. So something I could tell my sister to do is to literally throw away or burn that pair of underwear that she had two negative experiences in and she might find a lot of relief or she might find a lot of uh, a feeling like she let that pattern go, let that energy go. And what if the information about the different energy that you're wearing could literally make you more magnetic based on your perspective or based on the energy of what you're actually wearing. Now, for example, I went with my best friend. We were, he was in uh, LA recently and we went to this shop that was right down the street. And I want to show you something that was kind of, was very interesting about what happened. Now, this is a vintage shirt. Um, it's from this place that, and, and the way the story of the, the way the guy explained it is that it was by Lenny Kravitz designer. Lenny Kravitz is a very, um, kind of like out there fashion style person. And this person's stylist would put all this attention to detail into these clothes. Like every little piece on it has like intention and it's considered art. And what was interesting is my friend Victor and I, we splurged on two shirts. We each got a shirt um, from this place. And what was interesting is I don't know if it was based on the story that was told about it or just the fact that it was, uh, we found it to be special and we ended up wearing um, these shirts right after we bought them. But literally within an hour or two of us each getting these shirts and wearing them, we got stopped multiple times from people on the street that said, that's a cool shirt to either him. He had a smashing pumpkin shirt and then mine's a Foo Fighters shirt. But nonetheless, we were going out and it was amazing how many people would compliment or like, not to say we bought the shirt for attention, but it was interesting that maybe we felt a certain way when we bought the shirts. Maybe we knew the story of the stitching and the artist that made the shirts. But then what we did is going out, there was a certain way that we maybe felt about it that also had a certain 
like effect of people noticing it or people commenting on it. So there's this idea behind attentionality with the clothes that we wear and the permission that we give ourselves to feel in a higher vibrational state or to feel in a magnetic state. And this doesn't mean that you need to buy expensive clothes or, you know, with, with a certain story behind it. But I think it's something that, that's, that's meant to be said about the energy behind what you're wearing and the way that it makes you feel and how that affects what you attract into your life or the synchronicities that come into your life. And your magnetic energy in general is very much based on how you feel in your own body because people feel what you feel. So anyways, that was an interesting experience of just buying a shirt and then seeing the way people respond to it, and then also seeing the way that we felt about it, knowing the story. I wonder if it would have been the same experience without knowing the story of it, if we would have felt the same way about the shirts, and if that would have gone into the way people respond to it. Because I think very much a lot of it is not just the thing itself, but how you feel about the thing itself. So if you were to maybe feel more appreciative for the clothes that you wear, if you were to maybe feel more appreciative and give yourself more permission to feel confident and see how that carries your energy differently and how people respond to it in a new way because of the energy you're embodying. One of the most powerful things that you can actually do to cut the power of certain energy strands, you could call it, over you is to just look around your house and see if there's certain objects that are laying around that are having a certain association or effect on you, even in a subconscious way. You may have gotten specific things from high school or from certain times of your life, and this may remind you of certain things. You may have had a, um, I remember hearing a story once about somebody that got a specific vase, and it was when they got in an argument with their husband. Then what happened is every time they saw that vase, they didn't associate it with just being a beautiful vase. They associated it with this argument that they had with their husband. So think about leaving that vase around your table or on your dining room table or in your kitchen. Every time you see it, if there's an association to it, to this argument with your husband, it may bring up certain energy inside of you. Now, here's the thing. You can use it as a doorway into processing emotion and reframing it to where then you can realize that maybe that argument you had allowed you to go deeper and allowed you to actually connect with your husband in a different way. Or you could use it as a way of just getting rid of the vase as well, if it's something that has that association. So this doesn't mean that you need to look around your house and if you have all these negative associations to so just throw everything away. It could be an opportunity to feel unprocessed emotion and to reframe different perspectives so that you neutralize the energy's power over you. These energy strands that you have connected to different objects, to different music, what you can begin doing is actually optimizing it so that either the things that may have a negative influence over you, you could either get rid of the things if it no longer serves you to have those things around. This could literally mean throwing away things that you know is just random junk that's laying around. It could mean if there's certain things with certain associations that you look at whether it's even worth having anymore, or it could be a doorway to leaning into uncomfortable emotion and reframing it, knowing that the object itself has more so the energy of what it means to you more so than it carrying it some object that has power over you. None of these things have power over you. It's just the subconscious association that you have to it that may be subconsciously influencing you in your reality now. So becoming aware of that energy, reframing it if you choose to, becoming aware of what music you're listening to and how you feel when you listen to music, even the music you listen to and the phrases, the words that are being said in the music may have an effect on you and even a symbolic influence over your own subconscious mind. So these are all ways of taking your power back and consciously deciding where you put your energy. Now, I have a whole entire video that will show you how to manage the energy cords and energy strands to actual people in your life. This is one of the most powerful videos for understanding how you can increase your own energy and not keep draining the energy by giving away that through energy cords and energy strands. It's one of my most popular newer videos that I've made and you can check it out right here. When you are thinking of someone else, you are sending them energy. Think about it as if there's some form of energy strand 